at some point in our lives, all of us would at least own one of the following items. A mobile, laptop, games console, or even a tiny PC. Some of you guys might even have them all. All of these things have one thing in common. They can be connected to either a TV or monitor. But what if you needed a monitor that was portable and worked well with all those devices? This is the G-Story GSV56QM, a portable monitor with a 15.6 inch display that's built for entertainment, gaming, and productivity. But is it a perfect match for your devices? Let's find out. So before we check out the specs for this monitor, let's do a quick unboxing. The G-Story GSV56QM is a portable 15.6 inch monitor that is 36 cm in length and 24 cm in height. The screen is super thin at only 5 mm and when folded with the stand it's just under 20 mm. Spec wise it's 1080p, 165 Hz, G-Sync, FreeSync, HDR and a IPS panel with 1 millisecond response time. Now those specs sound good for a portable monitor. The build quality is robust. It does feel sleek and premium. I'm actually not sure if it's made of aluminium or a high quality plastic, but the quality is great. Unlike a lot of typical desktop monitors, a minimal amount of pressure will not leave any marks on this display, making this screen quite durable. Although if you do press hard enough, you will see pressure marks. The monitor does come with a sleeve that will protect it from scratches. However, if you put the display in that sleeve and in a backpack along with any hard items, the sleeve won't do much to protect the monitor from getting crushed. It's nice that G-Story have included a protective sleeve with the monitor, but I wish they included a lightweight thin hard carry case instead to really protect the display. The built-in foldable stand is a nice touch. You can tilt the monitor to almost any angle within 90 degrees and it will hold in place without any movement. On the right side of the stand, there are two USB-C ports and a mini HDMI port. Either USB-C ports can be used to power the monitor, but only one can be used for data or as a display input. Towards the front you have a headphone port, two micro 2-point USB outputs, and a switch to control the on-screen menu display. The speakers are located on the left and right of the I.O. Usually I don't ever expect monitors to have great audio, but let's give these a listen. To my ears, they sound good, nothing groundbreaking, the speakers are usable for everyday listening, but I use headphones anyway, so the quality doesn't really matter much to me. This monitor is not an anti-glare display, so if you plan to place this monitor with a massive window or light behind you, I wouldn't recommend it, as you'd get plenty of glare coming your way. And when you look at the display head-on, the colours look excellent, but they start to fade as you move along, as well as the brightness, so clearly looking at the screen directly is the best viewing angle. The on-screen display menu can be controlled via remote, and at first glance, the settings look simple to navigate around. Here you have quick settings to do some basic adjustments like brightness and volume. In picture settings, you can really go in depth with the controls and change things like the sharpness, black levels, color temperature, hue and saturation, and even more. This is perfect if you want to manually tweak the display to match another monitor. And lastly, you have general settings, where you can choose the input source if you have more than one device connected to it. Customize the look of the on-screen display and change the language, etc. Overall, I like the minimalistic sleek design to this monitor, but does the quality of the display match up to its design? Let's check out a few uses for this monitor. For things like surfing the web, I can easily read the text without any strain, as the text is big and clear enough. Watching TV shows on Netflix and videos on YouTube is great too, as this IPS panel produces very nice colors. I did come across one issue. When connecting the monitor to a laptop using a single USB-C cable, the brightness was very low, and every time I tried to turn it up, 
it would just reset to about 3% brightness. I couldn't figure out what the issue was. It could be because of an incompatibility issue with the laptop or cable, who knows? But I'll try to find out and have an update for you guys soon. So for now, when I'm using it with the laptop, I use two cables and an adapter to get it to work, with a single USB-C cable to power the monitor and a HDMI cable for audio and video. Now the brightness is working normally and everything works perfectly fine. When it comes to color accuracy, I came very close to matching the color profile on my video editing laptop. I didn't actually calibrate it in any way. I just simply changed the color settings in the monitor. The colors are accurate enough if you plan to use this monitor for making videos for YouTube or your own personal home movies, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Although for color accurate professional work, I haven't actually tested it with a calibration tool to know if it's accurate enough. But for what I need it for, it's good enough. It sure does make an excellent additional monitor especially if you plan to take your video editing on the go and you just need that extra bit of screen real estate, it's definitely handy. The display is sharp and the text is readable. When I edit videos, I love having my timeline and clips on one screen and the preview display and other tools on the other screen. It just makes me work more efficiently. For PC gaming, I'm playing Battlefield 5 on ultra settings at 1080p and at 165Hz. I have a GTX 1070 graphics card and for some reason, I wasn't getting the option for G-Sync. It could be because I'm using a HDMI cable instead of a display port, or because my graphics card doesn't have a USB-C output. But either way, we'll play this game without G-Sync until I can figure it out. Visually, the game looks amazing on this tiny monitor. I normally play PC games on a 24-inch 1440p display, but at 1080p on this portable screen, I can actually see myself playing competitively on this smaller screen size. It's even better that it's an IPS display because the colors look fantastic, which is normally the case over a typical TN gaming panel. And at 165Hz, I haven't noticed any screen tearing or latency issues. So for gaming, this tiny monitor would make a great portable alternative. And it's just as fun using this monitor for console gaming as the colors are still good and you don't experience any latency. And the two micro USB ports at the front come in handy as you can use them for your controller to charge them while you play. And for phones that have a USB-C port, you can also connect it to this monitor, given that your phone supports it. I don't actually have a phone that can do it, but for anyone that does, this can potentially be great if you want to watch films or play your mobile games on a bigger and portable display. So that's the G-Story GS V56QM, a really awesome portable monitor that I think would come in handy for a lot of your devices and uses. There are a few things they can improve on, but overall, I really like this display and it's possibly my favorite portable monitor so far. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below and hit that like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. All the parts featured in this review will be linked down below. But anyway, I'm Andy Django and I'll see you in the next video.